Hi there. Um, I'm going to show you how to make, um, well, I'm going to try and show you how to make a, a really simple bottle form using slabs of clay. Normally when we use slabs of clay, um, it's, it's quite difficult to get them to curve. You know, you have to know kind of what you're doing a little bit to get them to go into curvy shapes. So um, this is the beginning of the bottle form. Um, that I'm going to, and we're just going to fix that to the top and that's going to end up our bottle form but I'll show you a little bit more about that later but you can see that this is a curved form um, with a little foot ring and I just want to show you how to do that out of a flat slab of clay so I've actually rolled one out already okay it doesn't really matter what size it is um, I don't even know what size this one is but you know uh, you can experiment with size, that doesn't matter. But what you do need to do when you are stretching and forming slabs of clay um, and you kind of want your slab of clay to go in a bit of a different direction, you need to have <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit extra clay there so that you can stretch it. So you must roll out your clay a little bit, um, a little bit thicker. OK, so this is about nine mil, which is quite thick, but in order to, to to get it to do what we want to do we need it we need that extra thickness so that we've got some mass and bulk of clay there to stretch and form into um a different shape it's fine you know flat slabs of clay you can have them really thin if they're just going to be flat or they're just standing upright but you need a little bit extra bulk there to stretch and form into different um shapes okay so this slab of clay is sort of dry enough to stand up without to totally flopping over um, I'm just going to show you quickly as well how to do a seamless, not a seamless seam, <laughs> that doesn't make sense, does it? Uh, a, a nice, neat seam, okay? So if you just take um, your length of clay and you and you make it a little bit longer than you need it, because what you actually want to do is overlap it quite substantially like that, okay? Like a good overlap. I'll just sort of tip that up so you can see, yeah? And then I'm just going to stand up, hello! stand up and I just want to get that nice and straight can you see I've got that nice and straight and on the inside it's um <clears throat> it's uh touching nicely as well so I'm just going to hold my straight edge up against that okay up against the overlap and I'm going to actually it's quite hard to do it that way around I might need to do it like this and then I'll show you if I just show you what I mean in the top, I wonder if I can show you like that. I'm going to make a cut. Can you see that angle, the angle of my cut? Can you see I've made a mark on the top? It's a very, um, what do you call it? What do you call it? Obtuse, acute, one of those. <laughs> okay, so then at that nice angle, I'm just going to push down through both layers of clay all the way to the bottom okay so then we'll take that straight edge away and I've cut right the way through so I'm just going to remove that outside bit and remove the inside bit yeah and now what we've got is we've got two angled edges right that we are going to be able that should well that will fit perfectly together like that okay but what do we have to do when we join two bits of clay together always 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 score and slip so i'm just going to do a bit of scoring up here and this is like a really nice neat way um to join the walls i don't actually do it that often because i quite like to see uh, to see the seams and stuff I quite I'm quite into sort of exposing all of that stuff but if you want a nice neat seam this is how you do it little bit of slip uh, just blob that on there don't want to go too mad with it so I've got a bit of slip on one side I've got my two angled edges and I'm just now going to push them together I've got my glasses on today those of you that watch my videos will know that sometimes um, I forget to put my glasses on or I can't find them or there's some minor drama about my glasses. Okay, so can you see I've just tried to sort of push that together, yeah, 
Okay. Can you see now? You can see that angle of the cut. Yeah, and how those two edges go together really nicely. Right, let me just, oh, sit down a minute and have a proper look. I'm just, just gonna press those together a little bit more. And what you wanna do as well um, with when you're working with slabs is it's a good idea to try not to poke it with your fingertips too much. You know, because once you start jabbing in and poking it, you're just gonna dent it and make it look, you're just gonna kind of lose the crispness of the form of having a nice flat slab of clay. So try not to pokey pokey. Um, I'm just gonna actually go on the inside. I just want to sort of try and press that seam together. I'm, I'm smearing the inside of that and I'm kind of giving it equal pressure inside and outside. And that'll do for now, that'll do for now. And that little tiny mark there, we can blend that in later. Okay, so now we have a cylinder that is ready to be squished around a bit. I'm gonna try and do this. I don't know if I have enough time to do it, but I just wanna show you the technique. Right, we are actually going to now squeeze that in together. So I am just like, almost like throttling it a bit, you know? <laughs> So I'm squeezing that and I'm using a turntable or at least you have a piece of slippy cardboard or something underneath your work so that you can just sort of squeeze it and squidge it without it kind of moving around too much. And you're trying not to let it wrinkle up um, because it will want to, because what you're essentially doing is you're forcing this clay into um you know a kind of you're, you're trying to squeeze it into a position it doesn't really want to go in let me just show you can you see so you start to get these wrinkly little bits but don't worry because we're going to sort all of that kind of stuff out later can you see i'm already starting to get a bit of a curve just watch that seam that it's not opening up again pressing that in and keeping that nice and together so now i'm really hugging it in i'm squeezing it all the way around so it's kind of I can feel it sort of I can feel it stretching and moving and coming in and I'm sort of trying to do it as evenly as possible um, now I am getting a few wrinkles but that's okay because you sure will get them as well okay so that's now feeling quite like I have actually changed the shape quite substantially. Okay, let's just make sure that joint is still good. Yep, that's all good. Um, I kind of want to do it a bit more. Let's see if I can just keep on going with that. Squeezing in. Oh, it's really getting a bit wrinkly and obviously it depends how soft your clay is as to how much, you know, you'll be able to get it to squish together. Right, I think that's probably about as much as I dare. But you can see I'm I'm getting a nice curve. It's no longer just straight walls coming up, getting a nice curve. It's gone very wrinkly, okay, but we will sort all of that out later. You can actually, on the inside, kind of get your finger in and smear that around on the inside a little bit while you can get to it. That's a good idea. Um, and just smooth that out because we will have to get in there the, when it's the other way up. So, and it makes it a lot easier if you can do a bit of that work. Now, again, you, you still want to aim for even thickness. So I'm just going around now and I am pinching that form where it's got a little bit thick uh, because it's sort of bunched up a little bit. I'm just pinching it and squeezing it until it's the same thickness as the rest of it again. And because I've smeared inside, that's helping as well. Okay, I think that'll, that'll kind of do for now. So you can see that it's looking pretty bad at the moment, but we'll just tidy all that up later. But you can see we've got a nice, we've got a nice curve on that now. So what we're gonna do is, um, I think we'll put like a little, We'll put like a little dome on the top of there. We'll just cover that. So I've got a scrap piece of clay 
and I'm just going to take that and I'm going to squish it on to my scrap bit of clay, okay, which has given me a very rough mark, <laughs> but I'm going to cut around the outside of that mark, okay, because we're just, it's, it's very rough because we're going to just smooth it all in later. So I've cut around that, okay, and that's going to be like a lid that we're going to um, place on top. I'm just going to squeeze around the edge of this and make it a little bit thinner so we don't have like a massive great big thick kind of um you know chunky thing that we're going to put on so that's now going to be like a little bit of a lid that we're then going to smooth down so i'm just going to make that into a little bit of a dome shape to help with the nice um just to help keep that into you know a nice kind of rounded shape and what we'll do is there was a way that that fitted all right like that okay so i'm going to mark around here mark around there and I'm going to score of course because we always 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 score scoring around here where the two pieces are going to join okay like that a little bit more on here because we want that to be a really good joint okay loads of scoring a little bit of slip all the way around and then I can pop that on there like that and I can press that down okay all the way around working it around so I've kind of made a little lid or a base actually okay and the only thing you want to do with that is, is get your finger at this point we're going to use our finger and then you can tool it all off later okay See, sometimes when you put too much slip on, which I did around here a little bit, it's, you, you sli your finger sort of slips, you know, um, and it's quite hard to get a grip on it. Um, so basically, th that is the beginnings, okay? So what you would do um, is, is after that has um, firmed up a bit, you would then work that into a much, much, much better, nicer shape. I mean, you can see, you can see where I'm going with it, okay? I know it looks a bit lumpy at the moment, but I, I need to let that firm up before I work on it. Okay, so that is, just make sure that size is, so that's all really floppy and I would have to get inside there as well. I don't know if you can see, can you see in there? And work that inner joint as well. So I'm just gonna sh show you the difference between this is like a leather hard piece of clay. This is actually really firm now. So all I did was I did the same thing to both ends of this one. Yeah, so I squeezed the other end together as well. So that you end up with an egg shape and did the same thing and put, you know, put, put the lid on the other end as well. Okay. And then I left it to dry out a lot. Um, and then what you can do is you can get um, like a butter pat, if you haven't got a butter pat, just like a piece of wood actually, and start tapping it and patting that into shape and scraping the surface with your um, cut uh, credit card. Because by the time it's leather hard, it really, oh, it's so nice doing the scraping. And you can really, really refine that shape very easily when it's leather hard. The base foot ring is just a sausage, literally just a thick sausage joined on and smoothed into place. And what will become the um, neck of the bottle shape is one of my seamless cylinders, yeah, which there's another video showing how to do those. And I will just join that on. Um, and that will become and put a sausage around here to join that joint and obviously cut a hole <laughs> um, and then that will become a bottle shape but I hope that sort of shows you a little bit about how you can make a bottle shape in components um, yeah 15 minutes is not long enough to show you but you know it's about different parts and sticking them together to create a hole okay um, give it a go let me know what happens. Okay, bye for now.